Welcome back to the channel, Warhammer Man back in the studio and today we're going to be showing off how to do some like weapon glow or lenses. Uh, nice and easy, quick little way to do it. Uh, simple and takes very little skill. So uh, before we get started though, uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, I highly recommend that you give us a sub and a like. I do everything from Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Age of Sigmar, uh, Warcry, and of course some Necromunda content as well. Anything from reactions and reviews to new rules or releases, unboxings, and uh, of course painting tutorials, magnetizations, and lighting. Uh, pretty much anything you can think of that is related to the hobby is a one-stop shop. So uh, let's get started here. We've got a couple of our Adeptus Custodes grab tanks. And now uh, we're going to use our Tesseract Glow to just do some glow on the actual weapons themselves and then also the lenses. And the idea is, is to just get a basic simulation of a light source. It's not quite OSL because we're not going for like the glowing around the area, but we want the actual glow itself of the area uh, to look like it is glowing. So, so we're going to get started with our Tesseract Glow which is one of the technical paints. It operates very much like a contrast paint and is super easy to use. All right, so we've got one of our tanks here and what we're gonna do is light up the little cockpit area right here. And then we have a couple places right on here where we want some of that light as well. And then there's a couple small lenses underneath. And we're just gonna get some of our Tesseract Glow and go ahead and apply it to the opening there. And we went ahead and just whited out that area so that this will stay nice and good and get some good coverage. And we do want to use plenty of this, but uh, it is much like a contrast paint, so we don't want to use so much that it like runs all over the place. And you can see how bright that is, and then as it dries, it will give us the look we're looking for. And then we have a couple lenses down here on the underside as well. right perfect and now we just want to go ahead and get this little glowing area right here and then that will match the kind of glow on the turret as well once we're finished so just going to go ahead and put plenty on each one of these there we go and once we've got adequate coverage we're going to go ahead and just set that one aside and uh, we will do our other one and some of our other parts as well all right and there we've got our next one and just going to put a little dot on these little guys as well And now we're going to do our turrets here. So once again, went ahead and just whited out the areas specifically where I want this glow to be. So we've got a bunch of little lenses there in the center. And then the actual weapon glow itself for the uh, like laser cannon deal. And you'll notice that I want to make sure that there is plenty on there. And uh, then I just want to leave it alone and let it do its own thing. So it kind of sinks down and all the pigment sinks to one area. That way I can come in later and add our little highlight to make it look like a three-dimensional lens. And for the laser, it's simple. We're just going to put a nice coat on each one of these as well. Just go through and cover all this. All right, and there we go. We've got a nice layer of the uh, Tesseract Green all over everything make sure you got plenty on there so that the paint can do its thing and then we'll go ahead and just let it dry and we can already see like the lens is kind of settling down there do you want to make sure that there's plenty on there so that the pigment can all sink to where it needs to be to give us that effect and then we'll come in later and accentuate it and last but not least we've got our other turret just going to go ahead and do the same thing There we've got plenty of the Tesseract Glow applied there. I want to kind of just use the brush to sort of push it towards like the cracks uh, so that the pigment will kind of gather around there. But uh, we'll go in with a second coat and kind of fill in any spots we miss. 
and then also uh, we're going to come in later on with a little bit of a blend and just kind of accentuate the energy so we want to let this completely dry we don't want to mess with it uh, so that it kind of like breaks the tension or disrupts like the surface because we want this to dry super smooth and once it's all dry we'll come back in and start doing our next coat all right so now we just want to be slightly more targeted i want to go back through and just kind of add a little bit around the corners and then we're going to kind of lighten it up in the center so we just want to make sure that we have adequate coverage uh, everywhere we didn't miss too many serious areas or anything we can see it's mostly settled down into the cracks Do just want to add a little bit more towards the ends here. And by doing this, when this layer dries, it's not going to obviously have anything in the middle. So the pigment is just going to get pulled down into the cracks right there and just kind of darken up the areas around here. And then we're going to actually come back in with a highlight and lighten up those areas in the center. And that's going to give us that glowing effect. So that's all we're going for. Just kind of building up around the sides. And then we're going to come back in later on and lighten up the central portion a little bit more. And that's going to give us the full on like charging up or like powering up laser effect. And looks good for now. Just going to go ahead and let that dry. And just going to go ahead and add a little bit more to kind of accentuate the lens here as well. And again, I'm just putting it in the specific area where I want it to be the darkest. Uh, so it kind of layers up on there. So I'm avoiding the sort of like bottom crescent portion of it and then uh, to the right. And now I'm just going to do about a 50-50 mix with Flash Gets Yellow and our Tesseract Green. And now using this, I'm just going to go ahead and pick about like the center quarter or like maybe half of each one of these and just kind of lighten up that area just a little bit with our mix. And we're just going to go ahead and do that all the way around it on each of these pieces. There we go. And that's just going to sort of give us that uh, kind of glowing looking effect there. And we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing on these parts as well. Just kind of do a little bit around the middle there just so it looks like it's glowing a little. There we are. And the idea being that as the color gets lighter and closer to white, that's going to show where the energy is kind of coming from. And then the less bright green portion uh, is sort of just uh, the brightness kind of shining but not the direct light. So that's the look we're going for. And so far looking good. And next for this bad boy, uh, same thing. We're just going to kind of focus it towards the central portion of these and just kind of leave some of the green that's already on there exposed. Just want to make it a little brighter and just kind of take out any little imperfections. There we go. There we go, coming along nicely. And we can do this in as many or as few steps as we want. I like to do at least three. Uh, so that way we have like the initial green on there, the second coat of green to kind of make sure there's no areas we missed. And then I'll come in with the 50-50 blend. And then typically I will come in with uh, just a bright kind of white at the end for like the direct energy. And I'll do that either with like a dot or a cross depending on what I'm doing. So, uh, but everything looks good now. Just gonna go ahead and let it all dry. And we're just going to take a little bit of our white scar and just add a bit of this into our 50-50 blend. And just do one more layer and then we'll do a tiny little dot of just the white at the end for the final glow. We just want to make sure we're letting everything adequately dry so that we don't like kind of scrape any of the paint away from our previous steps. So uh, now again I'm going to focus the light down at the bottom here. And just kind of stick to that kind of crescent shape. And then here, just want to cover up about 50% of what we've already put right here. So just kind of focus it right towards the center. So there we have it, just getting progressively lighter. 
And once again, same thing, just going to kind of do a dot on each one of these as well. There we go, looks good. And same thing with this bad boy. There we are, looking nice. And then we're just going to come in with a little dot of white to kind of finish it off at the end. So we've been focusing the progressively lighter color down towards the bottom and then darker at the top. So now we're going to come in in the top and we're just going to put a dot right up there. And that's going to give us our kind of lens look. And that's it, nice and simple. And then same thing on these, we're just going to put one tiny little dot right in the center of each one of these. And that's it, that's going to give us our intensity. Kind of focus our eye towards the lightest part and give us the laser kind of glow as well as the lenses. And that's it all finished up and looking good, nice and bright. And then last but not least, again, we just want to put a tiny little dot right at the brightest little part of it. And that's it. That is our laser and lens glow effect. So a little different from the OSL, but when it's all said and done, it gives a really nice look and catches your eye from a distance. And there we go. That's them all done. And you can kind of see the glow from a distance really catches your eye. And then when we kind of take a closer look at them, really accentuates the effect and uh, lets us really enjoy the kind of glow. Nice and simple, just a couple paints and a couple coats, and it comes out looking very good. And there's our other one, and you can see that the key is the contrast between the dark and light, the overall colors of the tank, and then obviously the brightness of the green. And then just adding that little dot of white in there, kind of focuses your eye on where the energy is coming from. Well, that's it. They are all finished up, at least that part of them. Uh, hopefully you got something out of this video. Let me know what you think. You can also use this on many different colors as well. You can use a red with sort of an orange color and then a yellow or white for the highlight on it. You could do it with a blue or pretty much anything else you could think of, a purple, uh, whatever you're looking to do. You can make any kind of energy and cool effect like that. Same with the lenses as well for like a night vision scope. Uh, definitely a simple process adds a lot to the model and again the most important thing is the contrast between the darker areas around it and then also the various levels of the actual color itself so if you go from a different color like the metallics in this example all the way up to that bright almost white color and each time you just cover a little bit less so that it gets progressively lighter and then the last step should just be a tiny little dot of white so uh, well there you have it hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial today uh, I'm Warhammer Man. This is Warhammer Man Studios. And make sure you like and subscribe for similar how-to painting videos like this. Uh, reactions, reviews, unboxings for anything from Warhammer 40,000, Kill Team, Necromunda, Age of Sigmar, and of course, Warcry as well. That's it for today, guys. Warhammer Man Studios. I'm Warhammer Man, and I'm out of here.